colorless paper packages crackle loudly. Colorless yellow ideas sleep furiously. Sleep roses dangerously young colorless. Ben burada ne yaptığımı bilmiyorum. At Carnegie Mellon University, we have been working towards a system for speaking to computers. In this film, we will try to show the problems that arise in getting a computer to understand speech. We all know that a native speaker uses, unconsciously, his knowledge of the language, the environment, and the context in understanding a sentence. This knowledge includes the characteristics of the sounds, the stress and intonation patterns of speech, a dictionary of legal words, the grammatical structure of the language, the meaning of words and sentences, and the context of the conversation. To illustrate the problems of speech recognition by computers, let us examine the sentences we heard earlier and their inconsistencies with some of these sources of knowledge. Colorless paper packages crackle loudly. Colorless yellow ideas sleep furiously. Sleep roses dangerously young colors. Ben burada ne yaptığımı bilmiyorum. One would expect a listener to have more difficulty in recognizing a sentence if it is inconsistent with one or more of these sources of knowledge. In fact, Miller and Isard have quantified the difficulty in immediate recall of these sentences. How does one use all these sources of knowledge in understanding an utterance? Modern linguistic theory is of little help because it attempts to handle every possible sentence using primarily the syntactic source of knowledge. Some sentences may have two or more syntactic interpretations. This may be of concern for a system based on syntax alone. Let us consider the following anomaly. I saw the Statue of Liberty flying to New York. I saw the Statue of Liberty flying to New York. In a system where many diverse sources of knowledge are actively cooperating, a simple syntactic theory capable of handling a vast majority of the sentences might be adequate. Rare cases where the simple theory fails can be handled by using other sources of knowledge such as context. To illustrate how a given source of knowledge might be used in recognition, let us look at a variation of the Shannon experiment. It was warm that Sunday. And then we have the first five words of the sentence. Can you guess the next word? Afternoon. Another guess? Morning. Uh, evening. The correct word is night. Can you guess the next word? And? That's right. It appears that anticipation and subsequent verification are the principal mechanisms used in human perception. Notice in this context that only nouns were anticipated. Knowledge is also used to reject a guess. What about the next word? Yes, cold. Car? That's not possible. It doesn't seem to fit. This hypothesize and verify paradigm works in most cases. However, if a knowledge is incomplete or inaccurate, people will tend to make erroneous hypotheses as illustrated by the following example. Now we'll try a different experiment. I'll say a sentence and you try and write down what you hear. 
in muddy ozar, in clay nanar, in pine tar is, in oak nan is. Let's try it once again. In muddy ozar, in clay nanar, in pine tar is, in oak nan is. These examples illustrate that the listener forces his own interpretation of what he hears and not necessarily what may have been intended by the speaker. In muddy ozar, in clay nanar. Because the subjects do not have the contextual framework to expect the words muddy together, they write more likely sounding combinations such as my deals or models. In pine tar is, in oak nan is. In the second half of the sentence, we find the same problem with words such as oak nanis. Notice that they fail to detect where one word ends and another begins. We shall see later that the hearsay system has similar problems with word segmentation. To equal human performance, a machine must use all these sources of knowledge effectively. In the hearsay system, this is achieved by representing knowledge as a set of cooperating parallel processes. Just as in the experiment, the hearsay system also uses sources of knowledge to generate hypotheses about what word might appear in a given context or to reject a guess. When the system makes errors, it is usually because the present state of its knowledge is incomplete and possibly inaccurate. Let's now observe the system at work. Pawn to queen four. I heard pawn to queen four. My move is pawn to queen four. Pawn goes to king four. What you're observing is a live demonstration of a speaker attempting to play a game of chess with the computer. I heard pawn goes to king four. My move is knight two king bishop three. Queen's knight to bishop three. The system is incrementally trying to match words to the unanalyzed portion of the utterance. If the resulting word matches are not optimal, the system backs up and tries a different path using a technique known as probabilistic tree searching. In step six, the system is on the correct path. In step seven, we see the system backing up from this path to try a large number of incorrect alternatives. Let us reanalyze the utterance and look at the thinking process of the system in greater detail. The speech from the microphone is passed through five octave bandpass filters and an unfiltered band, resulting in a vector of six parameters shown in graphical form here. These parameters are used to calculate a phonetic feature label for each 10 millisecond segment. These feature labels are then used to determine the beginning and end of each syllable as shown by the dotted vertical lines through the graph. Each segment is characterized as being vowel-like, fricative-like, or silence-like. Let us see exactly what sources of knowledge are available to the system at this point. The hearsay system cannot at present recognize sentences in unrestricted English and can analyze only simple phrase structure languages. The grammar for the chess task shown here permits five million possible utterances. In the present situation, a chess game has been in progress. 
The effect of the sequence of moves up to this point is illustrated by the position of various pieces on the board. Given the board position and the rules of chess, the system predicts all the possible legal moves open to the speaker and rank orders them based on the goodness of each move. Thus, even before the speaker says a word, the system narrows the possible choices to 40 moves or so. Of course, each of these moves can be spoken by the speaker in 10 to 100 different ways, based on the grammatical structure of the language. For example, the current move, Queen's Knight to Bishop 3, could also have been spoken by the user as Knight to Bishop 3, Queen's Knight to Bishop 3, or as Queen's Knight on Queen's Knight 1 goes to Queen's Bishop 3, and so on. Now we can look at the analysis of the sentence. So far, none of the words in the sentence are known. According to the syntactic knowledge, only 13 words, such as rooks or rook, are legal at the initial position. These words are rated by all the sources of knowledge to determine which is the most likely word spoken in this position. At the bottom of the screen, we see the result of this analysis cycle. Queens, the correct word, gets the highest rating, followed by queen, knights, and pawn as the next best choices for this position. It is instructive to see how queens got the best rating. Each word in the language is represented as a sequence of phonemes. The word queens is shown to consist of the sound k, followed by the sound w, followed by the sound e, followed by the sound m, and followed by the sound z. Given that one of the words to be rated is queens, a match process is started to associate the phonemes of the word with the segmental features of the incoming utterance. This match is based on several types of knowledge at the acoustic phonetic level. For example, the system knows that the sound k usually occurs as a silence-like stop segment followed by a noise-like aspiration segment, that the sound w may be partly devoiced in an unvoiced context that there may be an unexpected silent segment between n and z, and that the z might be shared with the next word if that word happens to start with a fricative-like segment. All these types of acoustic phonetic knowledge are used to match phonemes with segments of the utterance. Here, we see the matching process for the word queens. After the match is completed, a goodness of match is calculated by comparing the expected phoneme characteristics with the actual phoneme characteristics. This rating, when combined with the corresponding ratings of syntax and semantics, gives Queens the highest rating of 550. As the recognition process continues, the correct word, knight, gets only the second highest rating after knights. Thus, the correct sentence ends up as the third best choice to be tried. We now go through a couple of more cycles where the incorrect paths are rejected and we get back on the right path. But now the system makes an error. In this cycle, the system is trying to determine the word following Queen's Knight. Because of an error in segmental feature identification, the system incorrectly matches part of the following word as part of two. Let us examine what caused this error. Normally, the vowel part of two, although reduced, usually manifests itself with some vowel-like format structure. This can be seen both on the waveform and on the spectrogram. However, sometimes we observe extreme cases of vowel reduction where the vowel is completely absent in a spectrogram and is only present as a very low frequency energy in the waveform. Obviously, we can add a special rule to the system to correct for this case. What is difficult is the discovery of hundreds of such exceptions to the general rules that exist in speech and incorporating them into a system as a consistent set. In spite of the error, the system keeps on attempting to get back onto the correct path 
because other sources of knowledge provide the necessary goal direction. Let us now look at the performance of the system in a couple of other task domains, news retrieval and medical diagnosis. Tell me about war. When completed, the system will respond with all the news stories of the day about war. Tell me about Nixon. Here we have another example of an error resulting from inadequate knowledge at the acoustic phonetic level. The word tell is mistakenly identified as give. Have you been afraid of surgery? Let us reanalyze the preceding sentence without the higher level sources of knowledge. Have you been afraid of surgery? The effect of removing these sources of knowledge allows the consideration of many words which would normally be rejected by syntax and semantics. As a result, the system is overwhelmed by the number of options it must consider. Notice how much longer it takes to generate each new hypothesis. In addition, the number of options it must keep around causes the system to exceed its memory capacity. To date, the system has been tested on 144 connected speech utterances containing 676 words, spoken by five speakers, and consisting of four tasks with vocabularies ranging from 28 to 76 words. On the average, the system seems to locate and identify about 89% of the words correctly with all the sources of knowledge. Without semantics, the accuracy decreases to 67%. It decreases further to 44%, when neither syntax nor semantics are used in the recognition process. To be acceptable as an input medium, the system must not only perform with high accuracy, but it must also minimize the combinatorial explosion so as to respond as fast as a human would in a similar situation. To achieve this, it is our belief that the system performance will have to improve to about 90% without the use of syntax and semantics. We have attempted to show how various sources of knowledge interact in the recognition and understanding of a spoken utterance. As we increase the size of the vocabulary to 1,000 words or more, and as we relax the structure of the language, the need for effective use of all the sources of knowledge to control the combinatorial explosion becomes increasingly critical if we are to achieve the objective of approaching human performance in speech perception. Mm -hmm.